Hi, I'm Anne-Marie Kelly, and I'm glad you joined me today for another episode of Not Your Mother's Marriage. And today we're going to be talking about agreements. You know, I did a talk not too long ago, and, and I talked about agreements, spoken agreements, unspoken agreements. And a woman came up to me afterwards, and she said, agreements? I didn't even know we had agreements. But of course you do, and the example that I always like to use is I'll ask a woman if she sends out Christmas cards, birthday cards, cards to people, and, she, and usually the woman says yes, and, and then I say, well, do you send them to your family? Yes. And your friends? Yes. Do you send them to his family and friends? And usually I get like a, like a funny look that's like, yeah, of course I do. Well, my next question then is, have you had a discussion about the fact that you're going to be sending cards to his family? And it never occurred to her, her that, that she would do anything but be the one to send the cards out. But they never had a conversation about who was going to do that. That maybe one of you was going to send all the cards or, one of, or you would each send cards to your own families. They were unspoken agreements, and there were so many unspoken agreements in a relationship that many times so when you come to the end of, a, of a, a period of time, somebody says, you know, I've been doing that, but I hate doing it. Well, why didn't you ever tell me? Because we never talked about it. It's really important to talk about your agreements, your spoken ones and your unspoken ones. And so today, I, I have with me the man with whom I've been making agreements through now we are in our seventh marriage and 31 years, my spouse, Joseph Eagle. Hi, how are you? This is our first time together and a little bit nervous, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, so we're gonna talk about agreements, so let's go ahead. Well, Joseph, one of the things I noticed in each of our five-year marriages that when, that when we were on the same page and we were, we were in agreement, we moved faster together. Did you, do you find that to be true? Oh yes, it, that's true, yes. And, th and then that's why we do the agreements. And when we first started, it didn't, uh, we didn't have those agreements and we got stagnated. But once we start doing agreements through the family meetings, things started to move forward in a faster rate. It's a perfect no, but it's better than, it, than if we didn't have the agreements. And it's, I don't find it ever really particularly easy. Like, so, you know, some agreements are easier than others, but some of them get emotional and intense, don't you think? Yes, yes. The easy ones are who's gonna do the dishes. Uh, one of the things that we do, if I come home and she's on the computer, I know that I'm gonna cook dinner, and then she knows she's gonna clean up. Uh, there's no set role, but that's a simple agreement that we come up with. Yeah, well, our agreement is whoever cooks cl doesn't have to clean, and whoever is cleaning doesn't have to cook. Yes, and since I dirty my own laundry, I do my own laundry. We don't, ex we, that, that's a that, uh, simple agreement too, as well. Yeah, we have never done each other's laundry in our whole married life, and so when I'm helping other people with this, if they have children, I often say, well, Maybe you can do your laundry and the kids' laundry, and he can do his laundry and the household laundry, like the towels and the sheets and things like that. It's a way of splitting up that responsibility because a lot of times women say to me, you know, I'm doing all the laundry, and I'm folding the sheets, and, but there are ways of, to work that out so that you have an agreement that seems fair to each other. The only, dis the only disadvantage is I'm slightly colorblind. <laughs> so when I do my laundry, sometimes I may get the, the colors mixed up so when I get dressed up, I don't coordinate. That's the only negative about her not doing my laundry. <laughs> <laughs> well, know. that part's true. That's true, yeah. So, so I wanted to explain to everybody that, that this doesn't just happen. It's just, it doesn't, like we don't have magical, uh, we, we don't come to uh, agreement magically. No. You know, it, ta it, takes, it takes time, it takes the family meetings. And one of the things that, I, that I, I, you know that I tell couples is, don't even do it in the house. You mean the, having the family meeting? Yeah, I mean I, I having the family straight. meeting. <laughs> okay, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, so we take it out of the house because what, what we find is if we do it in the house, then, and we have an argument, and that happens pretty often. Mm -hmm. People sometimes say, well, do you argue? I'm like, yeah, we argue, and loudly. 
you know, it, it, and I often say there are no there are no perfect marriages, and because there are no perfect partners, and everything's in evolution. So yeah, so we have that, and when we have a meeting at home, you know, unless it's like very cut and dry, it's like who's who's going to uh, we're getting new carpet, so which who who are we going to which one of the estimates are we going to have for the new carpet? That's sort of not so, but not so hard. But if we go out of the house and we have something that's testier, like maybe something with an in-law, or maybe with something that difficult that's happened with business, we are more likely to sit and actually have that conversation if we're at a at a coffee shop or someplace like that, and we are less likely to get up and walk away from it. So the family meetings are important and doing them outside of the house are, is, are important. Do you agree? I, I agree, yes. That we, that's why we have them outside of the house. So we didn't always do family meetings. We didn't do, start doing family meetings until our third marriage. So in the first and second marriage, we were... Well, our first marriage, it kind of went along like most married couples go on at the beginning. And then in our second marriage is when we hit, we got hit the seven-year crash and we, got, we went for therapy. Mm -hmm. And that's where we learned a lot of the things that we have started that, it, you know, I put into a process. How do you think it's different now? How do you see what, what it compared what it was then to where it is now? Well, I think we mature as a couple as the years gone by. We know each other. Um, I know what you want to do professionally, um, and when I first started, my career was, was a priority. Now, with our agreements, we agree that um, your, your, your um, profession is a priority as well. So that's one thing we worked on that we're working on right now, which is important. Um, 20 years ago, may, that may not have been the case. But now we, uh, we have a better foundation. We know who we are, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses is, what, what we want to do to improve our weaknesses to strength. So we work with each other in, in that situation. So I think that makes us a better couple and a, and a stronger couple together. And how, and how do you think, and I'll, I'll agree with you, and I think that be, you know because we spend more time talking about it, Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we have a better sense of how we are together mm -hmm. as we as we do the family meetings. But one of the things I wanted to ask you was, how do you think the five year marriage affects the whole idea of making agreements? Well, the agreements um, answer a few questions. If something has to be done, uh, the first question is, who's going to do that agreement? Rather, it's calling up the doctor or, or, or getting some fixed in the house. The second question is um, how it's going to get done, who's going to do it, and when it's going to get done. Uh, and that makes it a lot clearer. It's a, it's a lot better than if it, we don't have the agreement, it's like shooting darts without a dartboard. You're just throwing it all over the place. This gives us a point of focus, and it gets done faster. And uh, and we tend to focus, and eat, uh, the, t the issue is, uh, if I have the time to do it, I'm going to let me take care of it. And if I have, if you have the time to do it, uh, you can take care of it. Most cases, is we whoever has the time to do it. Um, but, and there's a pretty even split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we write it down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for people to know. We, we write, when we come to those agreements, we write it down because, you know, a week later, you could say, well, I didn't say that, if it's not written down. But if it's, if it's written down, then you, then you pretty much know, I did this and you, did, you said you were going to do this, you said you were going to do this. And there's also something about writing it down that has a level of accountability that it keeps you honest. And the other issue to writing it down we found out if you, if you write the things down on the schedule, it gets done. If you just write it down without the schedule, it may get done, but not on time. And that's one thing we learned in a couple of years that, all right, the night before we're going to write things down, which is what we're going to do, and it's, it's on the schedule, and it gets done better, faster. What do you think is the... Is the overall impact of us having those agreements, those spoken agreements, 
that we make through our family meeting and they're written down and you know some people say well that's it makes it seem so much like a business how do you think because of our five-year marriage that makes a difference well we're on the same page that's the key we're on the same page um, and moving forward in the same direction you may have a different career I have a different career but we're moving forward on the same page that's part of the biggest diff that's that's what to me what the agreements do they give us they give us keep us on the same page and you know the other thing I think is that when I know you're doing what you're going to do and I'm doing what I'm going to do and we're getting stuff done, I then I think that there's a level of trust that mm -hmm. that happens that you know if, some, if I'm having a hard time and and you're going to do this or that for me, then I know you've got my back. Yes, and dependability too. Yeah, yeah, and it, uh, yeah, they go hand in hand. Trust, dependability, uh, are are that's there. Yes, I agree. And I, I think that makes a difference. I think it makes a difference when, it, when we go out into the world that we know that we have each other. Yes. In, in a way that, that sometimes I think people, it's a presumption with people, but they don't back it up. Yeah. And I think with us, the agreements and the family meetings make a difference with that. And I think that whole idea of having, having that trust, knowing somebody has your back, trust builds intimacy. And not not specifically the sexual kind of intimacy that that has that comes on its own in a different way, but the kind of intimacy that happens when you know that you can really trust the person that you're with, and that that person's not going to be going around the back way to talk about you differently or complain about you. And it's like oh yeah she does blah, he does blah. You're on the same page. You've come to agreement. You're two adults coming to an agreement, and I think that makes a big difference. Joseph, thank you for coming here today. I know that it was a little bit of an effort to get your clients rescheduled yes. so that you could be with me, but I'm glad you are. It worked out well. Yeah, thank I you. Did. And of course, you, uh, you can find more information about the Five Year Marriage at fiveyearmarriage.com, and you can find me on Facebook at Five Year Marriage. Thanks for coming today. I'll look forward to talking with you another time. Chen San.